Hey YouTube, it's Jay. It's a Wednesday the 16th of October. Um, this will be my sixth week of practicing getting ready and if you remember I said I was going to start rolling it up in six week, in a rolling six week uh, trend. Um, as it stands today, um, I have some stats. I'm going to shoot and uh, record my scores from tonight. Uh, we're going to do nine ball tonight. Uh, and then I'm going to share my stats with you and show you the, uh, the trend and whether we're improving or not uh, and overall where we're at. So with that, I'm going to do like I normally do. I'm going to warm up. I'll show you some of the racks from warm up. Um, I'm probably going to warm up, yeah, not that much tonight, maybe about 45 minutes to an hour of practice and warm up. And then beyond that, it'll be um, playing the ghost. Race to seven, nine ball. Um, with that, I'm gonna go start shooting some pool. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell. By the way, I haven't done the review on it yet, um, but I have a brand new set of Aramith uh, Tournament Pro balls. Um, rather expensive set. Uh, I do have a review of them. And I will, uh, it's, it's a short review because there's only so much review you can do on billiard balls. Um, but uh, that's what I'll be shooting with. This is a brand new set of Aramith Turn the Pro. So I'm not shooting the Centennials. Um, I think the Centennials have worn down over age and they're starting to gather dust in the cracks. They're microscopic cracks, but they're cracks nonetheless. And I think chalk dust is getting in there and it's causing them not to have the action that you would expect. So, a brand new set of balls. So let's see how this works out. All right, so we're just practicing right now. Decent break, not outstanding. Um, definitely a runnable table. One in the bottom left, two in the side. And uh, as always, I'm playing the ghost. So two, ball in hand after the break. Two in the Although side. this break, I could probably get out um, if I make the one. Yeah, I talk too much. Um, okay, so one in the bottom right corner, and then we'll roll up for the two in the side. Then I need to get over for the four. Um, and I'm going to play this in the side and try to go off the uh, end rail and the, the left rail. I'm going to try to go three rails to get on the four. I bump the nine, not a good thing. Um, literally cold here, have not shot one ball when I started this rack. Make the four. I bump the nine again, which is bad, but I end up okay. Cut the five in. And I bump the six. And I'm really, really making this difficult. <clears throat> More difficult than it should have been. Alright, on to the next rack. So I say that the rack's not wasn't right because the nine ball came out like that. If the rack's frozen, the nine ball doesn't move. It stays right inside the, the magic rack. So I probably had something loose up on the top of the rack. Still bothers me that I have to move the magic rack off the table. Straight in, got the angle on the two to just roll up for the three in the corner. Now I can shoot the three and stop it or maybe draw it back just a little. It's going to go off to the right and leave me a shot on that four. I don't get far enough, so I do have to come off the rail, but that's not a big deal here. Little top left English. Help it get around. Um, and it gets way too far around. I I really wanted to be shooting that five in the side. And I miss. All right, next rack. Still warming up. Decent break. See how the nine ball stayed in the middle of the magic rack? That was a frozen rack.
So that two's a little weird. It goes up in the top corner and it goes in the bottom corner, but it does not go in either side. The eight ball's blocking it from the side on the right and the five's blocking it from the side on the left. So I'm going to shoot the one in and I'm going to just draw back. Um, or maybe I come off the end rail. I think I draw back because I don't want to be reaching out over the table to get that angle. Uh, so I think I choose to draw here. Could be wrong. But I'm going to stay down at the bottom of the table where there's no traffic. And that ball goes about three times further than I wanted it to. Now I have a choice between combination on the five or combination on the three. I'm going to go after the three because it's almost in a direct line. So I'm, it's almost cutting the two into the pocket will make the three. But I really dislike this. In a tournament, I would shoot the two straight into the rail and draw the cue ball back behind that eight ball. Yep, body English didn't help. Hey, look, I got safe. All right, so now, now I'm playing the ghost. Um, there were a few other racks in there, but a lot of it was me just kind of shooting hard to, to loosen up my muscles. Um, not shooting very well, but I also didn't have a whole lot of time to warm up. I had to get up, and it was already later than I usually start. Just excuses, but it's real excuses. Um, so, okay, the one does not go in the corner on the bottom right, so I, I'm going to play the combination. I'm just going to play it nice and soft and lay the, key, the one ball up in front of the pocket. The two does go in the side. It also goes down in the corner. Um, I kind of hit that just either way was fine with me. So roll out for the three. Um, I'm coming across this, the line on the six, which I don't like doing. I like to come down the line. But uh, as long as I make the ball, I should be okay. This is basically a straight full break shot. Um, I, you shoot this, but you're going to sh shoot the six in with top right, go off the end rail, the side rail on the right, and spin past the seven. Get the leave there. Decent leave on the 8. Shouldn't have left it over the 9, but that's not going to bother me that much. And just straight, almost straight in on the 9. It's actually like a, a 40 degree cut. So something I just did, um, and you'll see, you'll see players do that. I wasn't lined up where I wanted to be. So rather than just moving the cue, I went ahead and uh, moved my whole body. Okay, another break. Another decent one. Um, tournament, this would definitely be a safe. Glad I'm playing the ghost. Again, nine ball sits in the middle of the rack. Right where you'd expect it to be. I think this one goes in the bottom left corner. If it doesn't, it definitely goes in the side on the left. So I'm going to set it up in a way that lets me just roll forward for the two. Now my plan on this is to roll forward for the two and then come off the bottom rail, the long rail on the left, and roll up for the three in the side. That's, that's the plan here. So I get on the wrong side of the two to do that, but I'm still okay. I can just roll up to the rail with, uh, or actually I can just come straight up the table for the three in the side. But I do get a little short on this. I wanted to be on the other side of the three or more straight in than I am. So I end up having to go three rails for the leave. And I under hit it and I'm, and I'm hooked. Nothing to do here but kick at it. I could maybe jump it with a jump cue, but I don't like using them. I kick at it, I miss, it's over. And let's do it again. 
Nine stays in the middle, six goes in the corner like it's supposed to. Everything's wide open. This should be a runnable rack as well. Uh, one could go in either the bottom right or the bottom left. I think I'm going to choose the bottom left and just come straight up the table for the two. The only thing I don't like about this rack is I'm going back and forth across the table. So I've got the one on the bottom of the table, the two on the top of the table, the three on the bottom of the table, the four on the top of the table. Then I get a short break where the five and the seven are also on the top of the table. And then I have to come back to the bottom again for the eight. So this is, this is a lot of long shots back and forth up around the table. There's a lot of ways to mess this one up. And you can pretty much bet that I'm going to find one of them. Starting with my very first shot. I wanted that to go straight up the table, not back towards me. Hit it a little low on the cue ball, and that's what you get. Make the two, come around. Now I've got the three, this is fine. Now I can use top left English on this, and I'll come off the bottom rail, off the side rail, and I'll come right down the line for the four, which is what I want. But I don't do it because I'm afraid of the eight, so I just go straight up the table. And I leave myself another long shot. And this one I'm gonna hit forward with top left so that it hangs on the rail, and I'm gonna miss it. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut that. The four ball missed. In fact, I missed it by like an inch uh, on the long rail on the left. Okay, once again, another imminently runnable table. Uh, one in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to take probably take the bottom right, I think, uh, with top left English. Okay, so this is a mistake. I should be going the other way. I should be going... I'm, I'm going to go straight up the table and just stay out in the open, but I really should have gone off the rail uh, and come straight down the line. It would have given me a better leave. And my draw doesn't happen. So this is a long shot on the three, followed by a long shot on the four up the table. And I just missed the three. You can see what I was doing with the cue coming off the end rail. Oh, oh he gets away with look it. at that. It's nine ball. Yeah, I hit that so bad I made it. So I didn't didn't have a choice but to hit the eight. Um, I was kind of hoping it would hit thinner than that and I'd get the leave on the four, but hey, this is okay. I should make this. But I don't. Another bad shot. And then I, I've got the leave from there, the six in the top left, the eight in the bottom right, and leave the nine. All right, so this is actually a really good break. Um, that's kind of the break I'm looking for. It drifted a little bit to the right, uh, but for the most part, I parked the cue ball. I've got a shot on the one, and I've got a shot on the one that if I miss, I'm going to leave safe naturally. So like that so with ball in hand though I can come up put it on the one come up the table for the two uh, two in the top right three in the top right and all right so here we go <clears throat> top, top right to chase it around the table for the two perfect got an easy shot on the two with the, the angle for the three Just want to come off and create a little bit of angle so that I can run the cue off the end rail and up for the five. Stretch in a little bit there. I should have got the should have got the bridge, but that's okay. Did exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, now I've got a choice of the five down in the end or in the side. I'm pretty sure I'm going to take the side here. And did not do what I expected it to do. I expected it to come across the table, draw back a little bit, and then spin off down for the six. Didn't do it. And then I just missed the six. Another decent break. One ball's makeable. Two balls wide open for, for a follow-on shot. Um, now, because I have ball in hand, I'm gonna shoot this in the side, not the corner, because I've got half a pocket with where the four's sitting. Pretty sure I'm going to shoot this in the side. If 
fact, I think that may be the only pocket I have is half a pocket in the top left corner or in the side. Anyhow, this is an easy shot in the side with ball in hand, and I'm going to roll up for the two in the top left or bottom left corner. Just hit it nice and easy. I think I got straight in on this and had to draw. Now you see how hard I hit that draw shot compared to some of the other ones? That's because I'm still not comfortable with what's happening on my, on my stroke. Sometimes that draw takes off and sometimes it does nothing. And that time it did nothing. Okay, so make the four, a little bit of draw. Six will go in the side on the right. I will come up the table. Now, if I'm smart, I'm using uh, using right side English so that the cue comes back off two rails to the seven. I'm not that smart. I'm just going to draw it. Um, I don't like that shot. I think I should have gone down the table and off two rails. Oh, really? And then I just miss the seven. This is where my big problem is, is just missing balls like that. Um, I know there's a lot to be said for, for small actions, uh, small movement, not moving the cue ball around much, but on a shot like that six, you can come off the rail pretty safely. There's no traffic from the six to the seven. There was nothing in the way, and you can get the cue ball in line and keep it in line so easily that um, it really doesn't matter which way you go about it, and it's safer to not do the draw shot. All right, so here... One in the bottom left, two top left. Um, depends on my leave. I can, either, I can put the three in either corner or the side. Um, I think the side is probably the right shot here because it gives me the right angle to go for the four. Yep, and that's what I leave, but I draw it back too much. And now I'm gonna have to force it in. And I just under hit it and got a little unlucky on top of it. Pretty much the only places I could have been not lined up was right where I am, right behind the six the same way. Help me outside. And there I am begging. Not today. Yeah, if I have to beg, it ain't gonna work. Onward and upward. Got the one ball that time, so I I hit off the right side of it, and the one went straight into the side, and I still made the corner ball. Um, but I wouldn't want to do that in a tournament. Uh, so the three's a little goofy because it's only got the side, or I can play the three-four combination, which is almost but not quite dead. It's going to take a little bit of a, a cut on the three, which is going to mean that the three's. I'm, I'm going to have to play that leave off the three kind of carefully and I'm definitely going to hit it, be hitting it soft. Alright, further away than I'd like but I'll, I'll live with it. So I'm going to roll up and I've got an angle where I'm probably going to make contact with that 9. So I hit it a little hard to make sure that I don't get stuck on the 9. Now I have to come all the way around the table for the five, so I'm going to hit this hard. And even as hard as I hit that, it wasn't enough. Um, made, the, made the first bank. Now I've got a second bank that I have to make, and I'm using the bridge, which actually doesn't bother me. I, sh I shoot almost as well off the bridge as I do with my hand. So... Yeah, I just miss. I actually didn't miss that by much. So, I know the game score wasn't great. Um, and I, I was kind of zoomed out the whole time, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but, I saw something really encouraging. Something that I've been actively trying to work on. Um, and it happened a couple of times in those racks. Uh, you may have noticed, especially on draw shots, that I was overdrawing the ball a few times, um, even though I wasn't hitting it hard. 
Uh, and the reason for that is that my stroke is starting to smooth out. I'm starting to get to where my stroke is what it should be. Um, so although the ball score isn't great, uh, or the uh, game score isn't great, um, in fact it's, it's down from last week, but it's been a bad week um, all, all around. Uh, but with it, with the game score, even though the game score is down, the ball, to, the ball average, um, I'm going to look in a minute, and I'm pretty sure that it's going to be down as well. Um, I'm seeing my stroke start to work again, and that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. And a lot of the games that I lost tonight, I lost because I over or under stroke the ball as I'm getting used to my stroke working again. So overall, not terribly disappointed in today's set. I mean, it, it, it is going to represent a dip in my stats, but I think it's one of those things where you climb, you climb, you climb, and then you drop, and then you climb, you climb, you climb, and you drop, or you plateau and climb and plateau and climb. Um, and I think we just hit a plateau, so, uh, or, or even a, a dip. Um, so not hugely worried about that. Anyhow, on to looking at the stats. Now we'll remind you, if you like what you saw, hit like, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell, wherever it is, I always forget which side it's on. Um, and we'll see you next week. All right, so here's what my stats look like for the uh, for the first six six weeks. Um, that includes the starting number and the uh, number from yesterday. Um, so what are we looking at here? So this is overall. I played 45 racks for record uh, over eight sessions. I'm averaging six balls a run. Not that great. Um, it's not hugely horribly bad since most of this is nine ball but uh, we'll, we'll look in just a second um, I've got a couple filters up here so I can pick the game and it'll show the stats for that game over here this is the breakdown of how many racks I've played of each um, and so straight pools not racks it's runs um, my average run in straight pool is 10 almost 11 my average run in nine ball is about five and a quarter. Um, definitely want to get those up. Uh, I, I really want to see this number above eight, meaning that I usually run the rack. Now, when, when we're talking about the runs, the way that I'm counting this is if I don't sink the nine ball, it is a, it's whatever number of balls were sunk. Uh, if I do sink the nine ball, even if it's early, I, it counts as a nine um, because I won the game. That's how I'm counting that. Uh, this one, I'm counting as uh, however many balls I run. Um, it, it's that easy. Okay, so this is overall. If we talk just about nine ball, I played 39 racks of nine ball over five sessions. I averaged five, five and a quarter. Uh, and you can see here, these are the average run. Uh, this was the first day I played. I had uh, a couple games where I only sunk one ball, uh, but I also had a run in there. So minimum of one, max of nine. I played eight racks, uh, and the average was three and a half balls. The next session, again, I had a rack with one. Uh, I had a maximum of where I ran the rack. Uh, and an average of 4.8, so going up. Uh, third session, minimum of four, and a max of nine, which gave me over over five racks. Um, I only re I'm only recording the ones that you see on video. So the ones that happened after I cut the video, those ones don't count. Um, so it's just the five that were in that video. Um, average of 6.8. Uh, September 22nd or September 20th I had a two ball run and I had at least one rack that I ran completely uh, it was 10 racks which would have meant that it was three to seven so I got nine three times uh, the average was was uh, 5.9 and then the one we just watched uh, was eight racks 
average of five and a half balls per rack, minimum of four, maximum of nine. So that's that's how you read this thing. Um, and what I'm really looking at is I want to see this this yellow bar, which is the trend bar, continuing to trend up. Okay, so straight pool. I've played three times for record. I played on September 29th. I made uh, nine balls on the first run, five balls on the second run for an average of seven. Uh, then the second time, uh, I had my first run was 19, my second run was 11, giving me an average of 15. Uh, and then this Sunday just passed, I had a 9 and an 11, which gave me an average run of 10. Um, so overall, still trending up. Uh, and what I'd like to see is, you know, like I said in the video uh, Sunday, I expect it to be low sometimes, I expect it to be higher sometimes. Really what this yellow is showing me is that I'm trending up, and that's what I want to keep seeing. So trending up in nine ball, trending up in straight pool. Um, you can see that I started at seven, I had a 15, and then I had a 10. So overall I'm still trending up, uh, and I want to see it continue to trend up. So. Those are the numbers. Uh, I am trending up, which I expected. Um, the biggest thing that I need to work on is the number of balls that I'm missing. I'm just flat missing shots. And that's going to come with practice. And uh, we will see where it goes from here. So those are the stats. That's how I'm doing so far. Um, that's a pretty decent slope. It's not not super great, but it's not super bad. I do expect that at some point I'm going to turn the corner. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the video that I saw the... I've started to see my stroke get back to normal. Um, I've started to see some of, the, some of the spin showing back up instead of having to muscle through it starting to get where the spin is showing up purely from the stroke and not from the power. Um, going to continue working on that and shouldn't take too long and I'll be able to start moving the ball around the table pretty much with the... So right now, uh, this is where I'm at. Still trending up, that's good. Uh, I have not done rolling six that I'm going to be using, which would mean that it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we combine all of those. Uh, well, actually, so it'd be in the same game. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. I'd have a sixth one, and then we combine all of those to get one data point. And then the next next time I played after that, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And by doing the rolling six, it smooths out the average. Um, and it gives me a better picture of how I'm trending, but I just don't have enough data points to do that yet. So anyhow, this is what I'm looking at, and I thought I'd share that with you. Um, this is how I'm tracking my progress. And with that, I will let you go. If you like what you saw, hit like, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell, and we will see you next time.